we will see that production and uh, employment here uh, in the last class i have given the definition of uh, three sectors right and i have given the paper information gdp we have studied gdp also it is gross domestic product which is uh, income of a country total income of a country and it indicates how much income is generated in a nation so for that all the economic activities or occupational structures are classified into three sectors we have seen that that is agriculture sector industrial sector and service sector so here gdp which is uh, national income in which we find uh, the share of uh, three sectors right so this we have seen money lender garden potter with this all to which sector they falls how do we classify different occupational structures into three sectors one is where the nature's uh, dominant role is there that comes under agriculture sector this year and where the manufacturing uh, production is done by using machines and tools that comes under industrial sector and without producing the goods only some kind of uh, support is given to agriculture industries that is uh, service sector where services only rendered without producing any goods and uh, services this we have studied yesterday right and the table is given here this table also we have seen this is the what uh, what is the table about you in a, under information skill you will find a question that what is the table about it the table is about employment in three different sectors agriculture industries services what does the table show the table shows employees in three different sectors in two different periods there is a period of 43 years 1972 to 73 and 2015 to 2016 right so what are the major changes we observe from the table the major changes is that employment in agriculture declined in industries and services it is increased this is the major change and find from what you have read before discuss what could be some of the reasons for these changes is asked so what are those changes that is uncertainty in agriculture the income is not regular right so all these are the what the factors what are the reason for change in that one why the employment increased in industries because employment opportunities are increasing in industries there's a defined pattern of income right we will come back again about this table discussion in the pie charts in the next page we have pie charts there we will discuss along with this one okay so here some of the three pictures given your four pictures are given to you asking you that to which of the sector they fall there this is also we have stated that it is a agriculture sector it is a industry agriculture it is a primary sector it is a primary sector right and it is a third is a service sector and fourth is industrial sector right because they are using the tools and machines in producing the goods here and here it is uh, giving a service to communicate with each other so it is a service sector and the in these two there is a do, nature's dominant role is there so those comes under primary sector right so what is uh, coming to gdp gross domestic product uh, 
in telugu we call it is stula deshi utpatti understand one example is given here to identify who are rich who are poor so generally how do we identify the people are rich and poor it is by their income and their uh, what to call clothes which they wear the dress they wear the hospitals which they go and the things they use whether they are using car or bicycle or uh, what to call motorbike right then the articles which they use in their home there is the refrigerator tv hmm? uh, and then music system like these some valuable items in the home will decide that they are rich right so that is income so income is uh, taken similarly for a nation also we take that uh, income of a nation right how to take the income of a nation it is about the value of all the goods and uh, services instant so for a country for a nation we take uh, the total value here it is there uh, the total value of uh, goods and services produced in a country as an indicator to the income of a nation it is a technical term which one gdp is a technical term this gdp is a technical term that we use to uh, indicate the what you call national income or the total income of a nation understand so here the following graph shows the total value of the gdp in two different periods that is to 73 to 74 and 2013 to 2014 and we can compare that uh, what kind of increase have taken place in the production of the three sectors by going through the this table my dear students it is a table here and this is the table uh, let me uh, make it like this it will be useful okay right see here this is the table so what does the table shows the table shows what uh, production of the three sectors understand it means the income income contributed from three sectors to the gdp of a nation it is our india so income contribution from three sectors to the india here in 73 to 74 it uh, is given three colors are taken here three colors represent three different uh, sectors agriculture sector is indicating with uh, blue industries with hello service sector with green right so what is the total contribution from agriculture sector in 73 to 74 that is 245479 right that is uh, contribution from agriculture sector then from uh, industries it is 1 5575 rupees right then from service sector it is 259509 when it comes to the 2013 and 2014 you will see there lot of change 245475 is the contribution from agriculture sector increase it to 8 lakh approximately 8 lakh 8 lakh 548 right then to 1 lakh 5575 is the contribution from uh, agriculture in, in the industrial sector increase it to 10 lakh 73561 and the service sector which was 2 lakh 59509 rupees increase it to 38 lakh 67681 right so here we see see the graphs uh, in, in in this graph we can identify which of the sector contribution is high to the gdp by looking to the size of the each sector my dear students if you observe that here in the graph bar showing in 2013 and 2014 there the green color bar in the bar the green color is very large it means that by service sector it is high contribution to the gdp that is a to that is the total income uh in the total income of the in in the total income of the nation we see that the service sector contribution is high right what is by aggregate aggregate in the sense total see uh in 17 1973 to 74 the total income that is the total gdp in the uh in our nation 
the amount is 6,10,563 and that increase to 57,41,790 rupees. So, uh, this is the graph depicting, that means showing that uh, the income contribution from three sectors, right? So, we can identify here which of the sector contribution is low, that is agriculture sector contribution is low. It increased from two near about two lakh to eight lakh, right? And one lakh uh, is the contribution, approximately one lakh five thousand. That is the contribution of uh, industries increased to ten lakh, near about uh, ten lakh, right? This one. And when service is what uh, high, that means when this graph tells us that we need to focus on the other two sectors especially agriculture sector where the income contribution to the gdp is just 8 lakh rupees right 8 lakh rupees instead just a minute it is uh, let me complete that i'm sorry 8 lakh no, it is 8 uh, uh, the given it is crores so 8 lakh crores this is not a uh, uh, lakh it is 8 lakh crores instead so yeah, I said no, there is a connection between this graph and the previous one here, the table. Dear students, see that the employment in agriculture was 74 in 72 to 73. It decreased to 47 percentage. It means if you look at that, the employment in the three sectors, that is agriculture, industries and services by 2015 and 16, we will identify that still agriculture is dominating in employment. That means large number of people are employed in agriculture sector only by 2015 and 16. When employment is high in agriculture sector, then income from agriculture sector should be high than the industries and services. But it is here reverse, right? The employment in agriculture sector is very high see it is a 47 percentage of employment in agriculture 22 percentage of employment in industries and 31 percentage of employment in service sector right so where do we find a high number of uh, employment that is in a uh, agriculture but its contribution to the gdp is very less that is 8 lakh crores when compared to industries and services right so that we need to focus on agriculture how to improve the income from agriculture sector to the gdp in gdp there is a low contribution from agriculture sector so we need to focus on it and another thing is that service sector is contributing high income to the uh, gdp so it should be uh, what to call concentrated to in order to increase the national income if the national income increases that is the GDP increases then the GDP percentages will uh, what to call uh, increase very much that denotes that the nation is moving forward right so the nation is moving what forward so there we, we have to know the what how the contribution is there from the three sectors instead so here it is telling that the agriculture sector is contributing very no, this may be given in examination. Okay, that uh, what is the graph eh, about? The first question will be like this: What is the graph about? The graph is about contribution from three sectors. Contribution from three sectors that is agriculture, industries, and services to the GDP. Right? They may be asking that which of the sector uh, contribution is high in 2013 to 2014. That is service sector 38,67,681 crores right and which of the sector contribution is very low that is uh, uh, agriculture sector like these uh, questions are framed on the graph this will be asked to you in a information skill information skill is academic standard on that this table may come to you right so please go through the table right and one more question will be asked on this that what is GDP here you cannot find that the GDP to define what is GDP right because the GDP is uh, connected with this graph so we should know that it's uh, one what is GDP now what is GDP it is the total 
value of uh, all the goods and services produced in a nation okay so let us see that how the gdp is uh, estimated right see we find that the people engage in different uh, economic activities producing the what income to different sectors large number of goods and services are produced uh, in the nation right so how many goods and services are produced we want to know it right so as with uh, as many as thousands of goods and services being produced it may be difficult task for us see if you look at that uh, chairs uh, some millions of chairs are produced if you look at the cars some hundreds and millions of the cars are produced right if you look at the what uh, some furniture it will be in great number then how do we take uh, that uh, total goods for uh, calculating the national income so there is a what uh, complexity to avoid that complexity there economists suggested to take the total value of the goods in place of the total number of goods instead so here one example is given to understand that one please will follow that example see that for example if a thousand ten thousand kilograms of paddy is uh, sold at 25 rupees per cage then the total value of the paddy will be 250000 which comes with 10000 into 25 it becomes 250000 are you clear then the value of 5000 coconuts if those are uh, sold at 10 rupees per each it becomes 50000 right so in that way uh, what to call we take the total value instead of taking the number 5000 coconuts then 10000 kilograms of paddy like that we uh, will be eliminated in place of that we will take what is the value of the 10000 kilograms of paddy and what is the value of 5000 coconuts like that we will take and will estimate for that here it is given for example a farmer who sells paddy uh, in a rice mill to sorry to a rice mill uh, rice mill uh, for a uh, 25 rupees cage then she sells uh, if the farmer is a woman then she sells what uh, 100 kilograms of paddy right with her a with a farmer there is a 100 kilograms of paddy is there and she uh, sold it 25 rupees per cage to the rice miller instead so that what will be the value of that uh, 10 100 kilograms of paddy 100 into 25 because each kilogram is 25 kg so its a total value become 2500 rupees now 2500 rupees is the total value of the paddy dear students paddy is a intermediate good we cannot use it directly instead keep in mind this will will come to this point again paddy is a intermediate good what is mean by intermediate good the goods which will be processed again in producing the final good that is called uh, what to call uh, uh, intermediate goods for example plastic is there plastic is a intermediate good we cannot use plastic if uh, a chair is produced by using that plastic then the chair becomes the final good clear then what to call a wooden uh, what to call plate is there and that cannot be used directly it is used to make a bench a chair then the bench or the chair becomes what a final product paper is what to call a wood pulp wood pulp is what a intermediate good right car tire is there car engine is there uh, the car body is there all these are intermediate goods we cannot use the tire engine then the body of the car directly when all these are assembled it becomes a vehicle so a vehicle that is a car is a finished good understand so paddy cannot be consumed directly we cannot take paddy directly so it is a intermediate good so she cultivated paddy and that cultivated that is 100 kg of paddy she sold to the rice miller at 25 rupees cage then its value
become what two thousand five hundred rupees. Understand? Similarly, the rice mill. That means rice miller takes that hundred kilograms of paddy from the farmer and produces eighty kilograms of rice and twenty kilograms of husk. Right? When the paddy is taken and processed in a rice mill. There, eighty kilograms of rice has come, and twenty kilograms, twenty kilos, what you call a uh, husk has come. Now, this is also what a uh, not final product. Uh, it's not finished good. We cannot consume directly. It should be what uh, again further processed. Uh, so, the rice miller sells uh, this to the water layer. Instead, how he sells? He is uh, selling forty rupees cage. The rice he is selling forty rupees cage to the hoteler. So how much rice he is selling? Eighty kilograms. Understand? So eighty into forty. Understand? Right? That becomes three thousand, uh, three thousand two hundred. Right? Then the husk, husk also he is selling to hoteler. Husk is used to generate the fire or what you call. It is used, you know, uh, while preparing the food. So, twenty kgs of husk he sold to that uh, hotelier at twenty rupees cage each. So it becomes what twenty into twenty, that is four hundred. So total eighty kilograms of rice is sold for three thousand two hundred, and four hundred at, at the at uh, the amount of four hundred rupees husk also he sold to the hotelier. Total income he earned is three thousand six hundred, right? So three thousand six hundred is the total value of which one? Eighty grams of rice and twenty, uh, sorry, eighty kilograms of rice and twenty kilograms of husk. Is it clear, my dear students? So it is what to call the total value. It is also not a final product. Understand? Then what the hoteliers will do with that 80 grams, 80 kilograms of uh, rice, right? Now the hotelier pays this 3,600 to the rice miller and uses that uh, 80 kilograms of uh, rice, making idli and uh, dosa, right? And the 20 kilograms of husk here, 20 kilograms of uh, husk. Uh, He uses as a fuel for making idli and dosa, and by selling the idlis dosas in his hotel, he earns five thousand rupees. Right. So let's come to the point here. This paddy produced by farmer gone by the three stages. The first stage is that farmer selling paddy to the rice miller. At what price the rice miller purchased paddy from this what you call a um, paddy paddy producer? That is two thousand five hundred rupees, right? In the second stage, we see that rice miller sold that paddy which he purchased at two thousand five hundred rupees to hoteler at three thousand six hundred rupees. So the income of the Hoteler is here three thousand six hundred rupees, and the hoteler used that rice and husk with that he prepared idlis and dosas and sold to the consumers who are coming to his hotel and earned five thousand, right? So five thousand is the value of finished goods. Understand what I mean by finished goods? Here, which are finished goods? It is those as these are finished goods or final goods which can be consumed directly. So, to make idli and dosa, how much expenditure made on it? That is five thousand rupees. Please don't get confusion here because some of you may go on. Adding all these things, two thousand five hundred rupees plus three thousand six hundred and five thousand rupees. If you add like that, 
what will happen you know actually listen very carefully so this 5000 is the total value of igli dosa and this igli dosa which is a worth of 5000 also consist of 3600 and 3600 rupees which we paid uh, which uh, uh, what to call hoteler paid to the rice miller right similarly this 5000 also consist of uh, 2500 rupees that rice miller paid to the farmer who produced paddy right so here the 5000 is the total amount expensed on idli dosa so that should be taken then it becomes the what accurate so what happens if you add this 5 plus 3008 and 8 plus 2 9 10 10 plus this uh, uh, 1011 11100 it means that we are adding double okay we are adding double so when we take the goods we have to take the final goods we should not take intermediate goods what happens intermediate goods are ta taken its value will become double so to avoid adding double of the goods expenses economist suggested to take the value of final goods value of final goods you need to stress here see what it is a definition under gdp where it is a gdp i'll show you that here see what is given here gdp hmm? where is it where it is we are coming to that point eh? hmm. total uh, or shall i say that total value total value of all the final goods uh, here it is there we use here it is a total value of goods and serviced produced in a country instead especially here final goods instead the total value of goods and services in the sense final goods instead final goods we have to take we should avoid taking the value of intermediate goods instead so here we see that it is a total value of idli dosa instead some if a car is produced then what is the value of that car for example uh, 5 lakhs so how many cars are produced uh, some 5 cars are produced 5 into 5 25 lakhs so 25 lakhs is a total amount of the cars produced there so here we should not take the engine cost tire cost because the engine cost tire cost or the body cost and whatever the seats the furniture used in that car added in the 5 lakhs worth of that car right if you take that the value becomes down and the gdp also shows double right that means we will not get a correct uh, measurement uh, and the value of the income of a nation so to avoid that economists suggested to take the total value of the goods and services instead here is a table given to you you are asked to mention that which are intermediate goods which are final goods may i ask a question to you notebook whether it is intermediate good or final good it is a final good because we buy the notebook and we'll start writing so notebook is a final good right car is there it is also final good we go to the showroom we'll buy the car and we'll start using it then computer computer also what a final good so what are its intermediate goods here it is asked for making a notebook what we need uh, uh, we need wood pulp wood pulp becomes what a intermediate good if i give you wood pulp and ask you that to write it can you use it no it should be processed to produce 
notebook similarly engines car tires then the glasses uh, then the furniture the seats which are in the car can we use directly no that should be used in order to produce the car so all items assembled in the car in making a car are uh, are can be listed here as intermediate goods then computer what are the uh, intermediate goods of computer a mouse mouse is a intermediate good we cannot use mouse directly when it is connected to computer then it will be used motherboard hard disk eh? then the monitor right the circuit boards inside uh, the computer all these are what intermediate goods right so we have to take the value of a final goods instead please keep in mind that when the definition is asked to you in one mark question what is gdp then you should write the total value of all goods and services produced in a country in a country my dear students keep in mind that means if the good is produced in our country then only we should take that one for example some cars we are importing right suppose from japan we are importing some country, uh, some cars some items we are importing some machines we are importing those are produced manufactured in japan not in india so if you add that it will increase a what you call national income so how can we take that one it's not correct what is actually produced in our india that should be counted while calculating the gdp that is the sense we uh, come to know by using the term domestic domestic means within the nation within a nation our nation is considered as our family right so in our nation whatever is produced that can be added you may get a doubt that suppose we also exporting some goods to other countries am i right yes suppose some medical product some some med some medicines some uh, what you call tools we are exporting to other countries right that should be added because those are produced in our nation right and exported to other countries so what we export to other countries which are produced in our india actually so that also to be taken into account while calculating the gdp and what we received as imports from other nations that value should be uh, what you call subtracted it should be deducted uh, while calculating the gdp so G gdp is that the total value of all goods and services produced in a nation in a nation means when it will to be taken it is, is it for two years is it for three years right there's a doubt right to avoid that uh, here is one year should be considered as a financial year right gdp can be calculated every year for every nation and it uh, uh, it is calculated uh, from the beginning of april my dear students year okay april it starts ends with march right that means what is this financial year this financial year started april 2020 ends with march 2021 that what we call financial year it may be asked to you in one more question also my dear students what is a financial year a year which starts with april of previous the current year and ends with march of the next year is called financial year dani telugu lo manam em antam ante aarthika samasramu every institution which is running the business will calculate what is the income it earned by the end of the march 2000 by the end by the end of the march okay so that is a financial year so gdp is calculated for one year starting with april ending with the march of the next year that what we call financial year and here we have to take total value of the final goods my dear students underline this point what i am showing it is a value of c just i am uh, underlining this one huh? so where it is uh, just a minute mm, here it is there 
no, this okay look at that this is the what uh, gdp gdp is the total value of final goods and services produced within the country during a financial year particularly in the sense financial years understand so gdp records the market value of all final goods and services again one more doubt you may get that uh, goods are calculated the value of the goods are taken in two methods that is uh, one is at uh, production and another is at uh, market level the goods value is different at uh, market uh, level what is market level market level means uh, the good which is sold in the market for example just now we have taken the car which is a 5 lakhs so uh, at 5 lakh rupees the car is sold in the market that is market value actually it is produced it is uh, uh, manufactured maybe some 4 lakh or 4 lakh 50 thousand remaining all the taxes uh, added to that one so it become what uh, 5 lakh so 5 lakhs is the what uh, market value so all the goods and services which are final goods its value should be taken at a market value at a market value understand and one more important example is that the work that is done that is uh, cooking cleaning organizing uh, bringing up the children children my dear students you are uh, what to call uh, taken care by your mother right for that your mother is not getting any income right your mommy is doing a lot of work in the home washing the clothes sweeping the home cooking food for you for all that there is no income because her work is unpaid work she is not getting any income so unpaid work is not taken into account while calculating the gdp right another example i want to give you that suppose in a factory workers are working their working time is from 9 to 10 o'clock then sorry 9 to evening 5 o'clock then they work 9 to what you call evening 5 o'clock for that they will be paid sometimes the workers are forced to work for extra two hours for that the management may pay may not pay if it is paid if the management pay pays that it will be added if it is not paid then we should not add so two things one is unpaid work is not added to the gdp and the goods which are imported from other countries its value is not added and the goods what we produce that should be final one that is the gdp so calculating gdp is very essential because when we see the figures of the gdp we'll come to know that whether the nation is moving towards a progressive or not if the gdp values are like this for example last year it is a five percentage next it is a seven percentage the next year it is going to be eight percentage we can say that the the country is moving towards progress to identify that whether the nation is moving towards a progress or not we need to calculate the gdp for calculating the gdp all the economic activities or occupation structures are classified into three sectors right and the gdp is calculated taking the total value of final goods and services is it clear so the next class will continue as per the schedule and you need to write answer to these questions okay please read the textbook that is digital textbook we have sent to you so you go through that if you have your textbook uh, manual textbook then you go through that okay that will help you read the textbook prepare the doubts and you can ask the doubts when we organize a doubt session okay now right and uh, through the whatsapp we will send the what uh, what you call the tests also uh, what you call uh, whether you are uh, understanding the classes whether you're going to the what textbook or not we want to know that so for that all we will go on uh, uh, what you call sending that so thank you thank you very much we'll end our session